G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and welcome to another Salesforce Marketing Cloud Functions in 5 Minutes. Today I'm going to cover the lookup rows function in Amscript, showing you how it works, how it's different from the standalone lookup function, and then I'll show you a few reasons why I think this is the most versatile Amscript function in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So let's start off on the Salesforce documentation page. Now I've put a link to this site below so you can have a look for yourself. And the lookup rows function we can see contains three ordinals. Now those three ordinals start with the name of the data extension that you want to return some rows from, and then the name and value pair that you want to use to search for values. Now this is very similar to the lookup function where you do also put the data extension name and the where clause, the name value pair. But unlike the lookup function where you also specify the name of the field, the lookup rows function, you don't specify that value because it returns all the rows that meet this condition. And there's one more key difference between the lookup rows function and the lookup function. The lookup rows function returns a rows object, an array of rows that meet that searched criteria. Now, unlike the lookup function, you can't just use the lookup rows value back in your email as it is. You have to do some more processing to make that value usable. Let me explain by using a sample data extension. So in Marketing Cloud, I have a data extension called Sample Rows, and it looks something like this. I have the ID field, first name, rows, email address, join date, and email opt-in. And I want to return all the records where the email opt-in equals true. So I could write that in script by saying set at rows equals lookup rows, and for the data extension name, I can say sample rows, and for the name value pair, I'll say email opt-in is equal to true. So when I run this AMP script, the at rows value will be equal to the rows object of the seven rows that met the criteria of my function, where email opt-in is equal to true. But unfortunately, I can't just output the at rows variable in my email. If I do, I'll return system.data.dataRow, which is Marketing Cloud's way of saying you're trying to print out a data row object. So if I want to use or print out one of the values in my data extension from the rows returned, I need to do some more processing. I need to tell Marketing Cloud what row and what field I want to print the data from. So for this example, let's say I want to return Brandy's email address. Now to do this, I'll have to tell Marketing Cloud that I want to return the first row in my rows object and the field value for email address. And this is where our row and field functions come into play. To specify what row we want, we can say set at row is equal to row. And for our first ordinal, we'll use at rows, the value for our rows object we set earlier. And for our second ordinal, we'll use the number one to specify we want the first row returned. So now we've told Marketing Cloud that the at row variable will be equal to this row here. Our next step will be to tell Marketing Cloud we want to return the email address field from this row in this row set. We can achieve this by typing set at email equals field, and for our first ordinal, we'll specify at row, the row that we selected earlier. And for our second ordinal, we specify the field name, which in this case is email address. So now, if we were to use the %v function to output the email variable in our email, we would see the email address printed, as it's selecting the email address from the row within the row set. How easy is that? Now you don't have to call out every single row and field function as a variable. You can condense these to make it more efficient in your email. For example, using an inline M script, we could write field row, and then specify our row set and row number, followed by the field you want to return. So now that you understand how the lookup rows function works, and you can read and write the M script like a pro, let's talk about some of the reasons you would want to learn this function and why it's one of the most versatile AppScript functions in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So let's say you're trying to create a purchase confirmation email, something like this one here from reallygoodemails.com. Now if you have your customer data in one data extension and their purchases in another, you could send to your customer data extension and use the lookup rows function to look up each of the purchases that customer made. Then using the for loop function in AppScript to cycle through each purchase printing out the image, the name, the quantity, and the price. This lookup rows and for loop methodology can be applied to other email types as well. 
For example, for an event email, you could look up and return all the presenters for the upcoming event. In retail, you could return back all the products that are newly featured or that might interest your customer. And for content, you could return back all the content articles that relate to a customer's recent interaction on your website. So as you can see, the lookup rows function is one of the most versatile functions in AmpScript. It is an absolute must learn for anyone trying to build dynamic and personalized emails in Marketing Cloud. So if you'd like to learn more about the lookup rows function and get some practice building some lookup rows functions for yourself, then try out my AmpScript email exercise number three, where you can go through and build a lookup rows and for loop function on both cloud pages and emails. And that's all for this functions in five minutes. If you've liked the content today, then don't forget to press the like button. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see some more functions in five minutes. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.